like to be in the service one more time, and our mass choir will come with a selection. So many reasons. Delivered out of darkness. Delivered out of darkness. Into the kingdom of his son. Into the kingdom of his son. Not only that, but forgiven of my sin. Forgiven of my sin. And redeemed through his blood. And redeemed through his blood. It again, delivered out of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Into the kingdom of his son. Not only that, but forgiven of my sin. Forgiven of my sin. And redeemed, redeemed through his blood. And redeemed. Now he woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. What else did he do, choir? And he started me on my way. He gave me, he gave me health and strength. He gave me health and strength. Not only that, but he let me see another day. Let me see another.
have so many, many reasons. I have so many reasons. I, I can have so many Pick me up one day. Turn me. Huh, show me how to walk before him. Yes, he me out of darkness into a marvelous light. So, so many reasons. Many reasons to rejoice. Have you got many reasons? I don't care what you're going through. I've got so many reasons to rejoice. Give God some praise. Thank you. Give God some praise. You. Whatever you're going through, you. rejoice anyway. Yeah. Whatever you're going through, rejoice anyway. God for his presence hallelujah right now we thank you that we have a reason to rejoice and in our rejoicing we want to welcome our pastor and our speaker of the hour suffragan Bishop Charles L Smith let's praise God hallelujah thank God for being here today thank God for the spirit of joy and happiness I feel in my soul today I was in the office getting ready to come out and I could hear the service. Maybe want to get my clothes on quicker and get out there, hallelujah, so I can bask in the praising and worship of God that is going on in Zion today. Today I want to preach to you and call your attention to the book of 2 Kings chapter 19 and we're going to read there verse 14 through 18 the book of kings second kings 19 verse 14 through 19 hallelujah is there a word from the Lord today? When you're ready, say amen, and we will begin reading. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, Bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Shennacherib, which he sent him to reproach the living God. For of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, 
but the work of men's hands and wood and stone. Therefore they, were dis they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Father God, we bow before you and thank you for this scripture text. We thank you for the thoughts that you have already given to us. And we pray that you will give us more thoughts to go with what we already have. And that you will bless the word of the Lord. Please remember those whose hearts are bound in sorrow today. I pray for them that you will comfort them through the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray for those that are in the hospital and have serious illnesses, that they will be touched and healed by the power of God. Remember those that are out of the ark of safety, those, hallelujah, souls that need to be saved, but don't know about Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you remember that those are in prison, that they might be rehabilitated and brought out and made good citizens of Cincinnati, Ohio. I pray that you will bless the words of your servant today, and whether they are many or few, that you will bless them and touch someone's heart and let them say, I want to be saved, and I want Christ in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture text for today is found in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 14, and the first sentence of verse 15. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, Our subject for today is Hezekiah's victory through prayer. Hezekiah's victory through prayer. Hallelujah. Who was Hezekiah? He was the 12th king of Judah during the divided kingdom. He was the tender age of 25 years old when he assumed this responsibility of being the king of Judah. Hallelujah. And he reigned over Judah for a total of 29 years. He was a good king and did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hezekiah was very zealous for the Lord. He repaired the temple. Hallelujah. He restored temple worship. And he sanctified the priests. He kept the Passover in Jerusalem and sanctified the priests and the people. Hallelujah. He was a good king. I said he was a good king. Hallelujah. And when he had completed a thorough reformation of Judah, Hallelujah. And when he had did that which was good and right before the Lord his God, and in Second Chronicles 20 and 21, it said, In every good work he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandments, hallelujah, to seek his God, he did not do it half-heartedly, but he did it 
with all his heart. And the Bible said that he prospered. Hallelujah. God was pleased with Hezekiah because he was one of the best kings of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did everything the right way. And when I read this text, I thought within myself that you can do everything the right way and still have trouble. Uh, maybe I better explain myself. In the very next verse, there was a king called Sennacherib who decided he was going to come to Judah and fight against Hezekiah. Hallelujah. And he encamped in some of the fence cities of Judah, but his main purpose was he wanted to come and to besiege and capture Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thought about Brother Hezekiah. He said, probably said, I wonder why the test when I'm trying to do my best. I wonder why the enemy is trying to destroy me. I wonder why he is trying to come against me when I have done everything, everything, everything that is right and good in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me and said that uh, hallelujah. You can do everything that is right, but you're not going to stop trouble and adversity and your enemies coming against you. Hallelujah. But one thing you must understand that God allowed this to happen to Hezekiah so that he might run to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why am I having problems? Why am I having difficulties? God's trying to make you run to him for help. If he lets you go and never touches you or allows anything to touch you, you could get slowful and snack and unconcerned. But God tunes us up with our tests and he tunes us up with our trials and lets adversity come against us so that we will call on him. Hallelujah. Sennacherib was not just a little adversary, but he was a great adversary. He had destroyed many cities and taken many nations. And he said to Hezekiah, your, hallelujah, Jerusalem, hey, I'm going to take it too. Hallelujah. And he sent Rab Shekah up there to taunt them and to make them feel bad and try to intimidate them and try to make them lose their courage and their strength and he could come in right away and overcome them and take whatever they had. Hallelujah. But Hezekiah believed in prayer. Hallelujah. I said, but Hezekiah believed in prayer. I, I see what's happening, and I received the message from Rabshakeh that this city is going down. You might as well give up because you're going down. You, you might as well give in because you're going down. But Hezekiah said, I know a God that has helped me in times past, and I know if he helped me before, he's able to help me again. Ooh, help me, Lord. He has a perfect track record. He has never failed. He has never let me down. I hear what you're saying. I hear your intimidation against my people, but 
uh, that does not bother my faith and my confidence that I have in the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. Shunacharib was in, in another part of the country and he sent a message to Hezekiah, uh, you know, to try to see if he could make him give up. Hallelujah. I'll get to where I'm going in a couple minutes. Hallelujah. But when he received the letter, ooh, hallelujah, he read it and then he spread it. <laughs> ah, come on, hallelujah. The letter sounds bad. It sounds like we're going down. He's coming. He's going to take us. He's going to take the city. But Hezekiah read it, and he said, I know where I have to go. I have to go to the house of the Lord. What are you going there for? Not to strike speak in tongues and rejoice. I'm going there to pray. I'm going to get out on my knees and pray. Lord, you know what they're saying. You know the threats they're putting upon us. Help, Lord. Hallelujah. You got to read it and then you have to spread it. And when you get done reading it and spread it, then you have to pray about it that the Lord will bring you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope we'll use this formula. <laughs> you got it? I love it too. It says, Hallelujah. If I let everything that happens to me worry me, I'd be worried all the time. I, I'd be so nervous, I wouldn't be able to preach today. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, that's going to happen. All those threats is coming to pass. Not necessarily. Hallelujah. Because you're not threatening a man, you're threatening a man who has been put into office and has lived in an office by the appointment of God. And I got somebody backing me up that I'm not afraid to call on them. I'm not afraid to ask for help. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I read it and I spread it. And now I'm praying to the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How y'all feel it yet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want God to hear my prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said in his prayer, O oh Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubim, the guardian angels of the throne of God, where he sets the cherubims guard his throne. They fly through the air according to the sixth chapter of Isaiah, and they cry, holy, 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 O oh Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. That's where he dwells. That's where he lives. His throne is holy. Oh, hallelujah. He has decreed that the cherubims will fly around him and guard him from any other enemy. Hallelujah. And cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with your glory. 
Hallelujah. Said thou art the God. There's a whole bunch of gods, but you are the God with a capital G. There are gods, many. There are gods that people have made alone. But hallelujah, even thou alone art the righteous. Art of over all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made them. Hallelujah. Then he said, Lord, please, Lord, bow down thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes. See the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent him to reproach the living God. What he said in the letter was that uh, go back to all those other places where Sennacherib has been, and he has defeated every one of them. Hallelujah. He has burned up their gods. There was no God that was able to save them from the hand of Sennacherib. They trusted in gods of wood and gods of stone and many other gods, but they, hallelujah, did not trust in the living God. That is the why, reason why he was able to overcome them. There was not a God that was big enough to pull him down. There was not a God large enough and powerful enough to destroy him. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was the big bad wolf. Hallelujah. Lord God, of a truth, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations of their, and their lands. They have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods. But the work of men's hands, they were wood, they were stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore... O oh Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save us out of his hand, that all the nations of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Hallelujah. He didn't tempt God, but he's saying, show them. Ooh, hallelujah. There's a lot of people that don't believe there even is a God. Even in this congregation I'm preaching to today. But Hezekiah said, show them that there is a God. Show them that there's a God that I serve. Manifest yourself so they will see that there is a God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told them, go tell Isaiah, the son of Amos, what Sennacherib said. Go tell him to inquire of the Lord for an answer to my prayer. Now, you may not know this, but there was a separation of authority and power when the kings came into power power. The kings had a kingly anointing, the priests had a priestly anointing, and the prophet had a prophet's anointing. Hallelujah. And God fixed it that their roles and authorities were separated so that Hezekiah only had so much authority, but he could not go. He could pray to God, but he could not go directly to God and ask him for an answer. Because he had a prophet in the midst. Hallelujah. 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 The king had no direct access to God except through prayer. He could pray to God, but the answer had to come through the man of God. Hallelujah. 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 
And if you want to read it, you can, but I'm going to move forward because I have another point that I want to make, and it is in verse 20 through, amen, 34 is the entire prayer. But Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me about Shernacherib, the king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken unto him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. And the daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. Hallelujah. You think you're so big and bad. You think you're so mighty. But hallelujah. You don't realize it that you have been turned down already. Judah is not on your side. The people are not with you. They have shook their head against you and said, my daddy will take care of you. The God of Israel will take care of you. The God we serve will take care of you. You're, hallelujah, you're big and bad and you got a lot of mouth, but I know a God that will take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm trying to move quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said in verse 32, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Syria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way he came, and by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for my servant's sake, David. Hallelujah. He's a big bad wolf. He's an enemy of Israel, but he ain't coming in here. Oh, I love this. I love it. Go with me. Go with me a little bit. We need to be like that too. We need to tell the devil, you ain't coming in here. We need to tell our enemies, you ain't rolling over me. We need to tell them, loose here. Get behind me. I got a God that's bigger than you. I got a God that is more powerful than you. Get behind me. Leave me alone. Hallelujah. We tolerate intimidation. We tolerate the taunting. We tolerate the big bad wolf who tells us what he going to do. But I came to preach to you today. You know about the name of Jesus. You know about the Holy Ghost. You know about the Spirit of the Lord. Don't let the big bad wolf scare you. Take the power of prayer and go before the Lord. Spread it out and read it. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, this is my situation. I, I need your help. I need your deliverance. I need you to come by and give me a helping hand. I, oh, God, I, please deliver me from the hand of my enemy. Hallelujah. God said he might be a good talker, but he's not coming in here. He might be able to scare some people, but he ain't coming in here. 
He might have some people shaking in their boots, but he ain't coming in here. And we have to be like Hezekiah. Hezekiah said, I want the victory over Sennacherib. I don't want just him to leave and go back home. I want the victory over him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God sent us death angel in 2 Kings 19 and 35 and killed 185,000 soldiers. So what did Hezekiah do? All he did was pray. What did Isaiah do? All he did was give him the answer to his prayer. But God said, they're not only speaking against you and against your people, but they're speaking against me. They say, Don't, there is no God who is big enough and bad enough and powerful enough to beat Shennacherib. But I got to prove something to them that there is no human being. There's no demonic spirit that can defeat the people of God as long as God is on their side. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. He might bark. He might make a noise. He might make you think, I'm going down, I'm going down. But you need to pray and ask the Lord, don't let me go down. Let me go up. Hallelujah. I want the victory over my enemies. I want the victory over the devil. I want the victory over his little imps. I want to defeat him. I want the victory. Hallelujah. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm asking God to do. God heard his prayer and sent the death angel and killed 185,000 soldiers. When Sennacherib heard what happened, he didn't even come toward Jerusalem. He went on back home to Nineveh. But God prophesied that he would be killed. And he was killed by his own family. When he laid down to go to sleep, they went in and murdered him. His own two sons murdered him. You know, he said, well, that ain't, that ain't very much, but that's a whole bunch. I believe if he had been kind to Hezekiah and kind to Judah, he would have lived a lot longer. But when he said, who can, hallelujah, defeat the king of Sennacherib, hallelujah, God said, well, I'm going to show you who can. <laughs> you think you're big and bad, but when I get done with you, they're going to be having your funeral. Because, oh, hallelujah, because you spoke against Israel and you spoke against their God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help Lord. Help Lord. Help Lord. Help Lord. God gave Hezekiah the victory through prayer. The word victory means success in defeating an enemy or an opponent or 
to overcome difficulties. Prayer is an earnest request. It is to address God and ask him words in prayer as to what you want him to do. Hallelujah. But remember, you're talking to God. You ain't talking to somebody else. You got to say, oh, Lord God, that dwells between the cherubim. <laughs> Oh, Lord God, that made heaven and earth. You got to stay down there. You can't say, oh, God, I'm here. You better listen to me. Nah, that's wrong. That's wrong. But God gave him the victory through prayer. Hallelujah. Luke 18 and 1 said men should always pray. They ought to always pray and not faint. We should always, every day, be sending up a prayer to God in every situation that faces us, that looks like it's going to overcome us, we should immediately seek God in prayer. Hallelujah. I don't see how the church can survive and the people can survive without prayer. We need to shout sometime. We need to speak in tongues. We need to have joy sometime. But your greatest victory over the thing that is trying to destroy you will come through prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. I said I know what I'm talking about, Cherry. I don't know how many victories that the Lord has given me through prayer. I can't even count them. I can't even number them. How many problems he has solved. How many healings that he has done. How many situations that he has brought the church out of. Through prayer. Through prayer. We need to use prayer as a weapon against our adversary. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians, it tells you what kind of armor you need to put on. Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11, put on the whole armor of God. She may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thirteen, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, just stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Somebody said, well, that's the armor of the Lord. No, you need one more piece of armor. It 
It is called a lancet. In this book that I read, there is a lancet of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I don't say lancet, but it said for us to pray always. Can you say always? In the good times, pray. In the bad times, pray. When you're on the mountain, pray. When you're in the valley, pray. When God is blessing you, pray. And when you can't hardly make it, pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. How, Lord, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Oh, hallelujah. No, I need to pray for myself. No, he said pray for the whole church. Let us not be selfish and only want to limit our prayer to me, myself, and I. Hallelujah. But Lord, help us. To help everybody else. When somebody's down, lift them up in prayer. When somebody's grieving, lift them up in prayer. When somebody can't hardly make it, lift them up in prayer. Pray for all the saints. You pray for me. And I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it's well with you, say a prayer for me. When it looks like you're having problems, I'm supposed to pray for you. Everything's going well in my house, but some of the saints is in trouble. Oh, I'm not happy if they're not happy. I'm not happy if they're not doing well. I can't be happy and joyful and speaking in tongues when the church is being destroyed by the adversary. I must use prayer. as a weapon in spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Because prayer changes things. And prayer gives us the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Need to come out at 9 o'clock on Sunday. And have some prayer on Saturday before the outreach goes out. Hallelujah. We need to have a personal prayer time. It's called the war room. We need, we need a war room in our house where we lock ourselves in and pray. Not because we don't want to be bothered, but I got to get through. I have to break through. I got to read it and uh, spread it, and then I got to pray about it. Hallelujah. And then I got to wait for an answer from the Lord. These Egyptians that you see today, <laughs> can y'all finish it for me? You will see them no more again forever. When God does something, he does it thoroughly. No ends attached. 
no loose ends, no leftovers. He does what he does thoroughly. Don't worry, Moses. Don't worry, Israel. Because Pharaoh's army is going to get drowned in the Red Sea. Hallelujah. You're going to see dead bodies floating up on top of the water and chariot wheels and army equipment that was designed to take you down. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, going to see it floating on the water. And don't wait till the battle's over like Miriam did and get the tamarind and start shouting. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Because you know do you really know who's going to win in the end? Do you know who gets the victory in the end? Jesus. He will defeat the Antichrist. He will defeat the false prophet. Hallelujah. He will triumph gloriously over those who have followed the Antichrist. He will crush them in the wine press. Hallelujah. Until their blood runs out, clear up to the horse's bridle in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. This is all. Isaiah saw him coming back for more. He said, who is this? Coming from Basra. Hallelujah. With stained garments. Garments dripping blood. Hallelujah. He said, my own arm brought salvation. Hallelujah. My own arm got me the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a savior now, but one day he's coming as the king of kings and lord of lords. Won't be no foolishness then. Right now, you get a chance to bow. You should bow. But in that day, you shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Victory comes through prayer. I said victory comes through prayer. When the saints begin to pray that the Lord will have his way. A lot of these things will disappear that are happening right now. Fear will be gone. Weakness will be gone. Not being able to make it will be gone. We will be more than conquerors through him that has loved us. Amen. Use prayer as a spiritual weapon against your enemies against the things that's coming against you. You don't have to kill nobody. You don't have to cut nobody up because our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God.
prayer will pull down the strongholds. And prayer will give us the victory. God bless you. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints. I hope I said something that will help somebody. But I'm trying to talk to myself, too, while I'm praying to you. Amen. I need to stop talking about stuff so much and start praying about it. Hallelujah. That, that's what I get out of the message. I need to stop being afraid I'm going to be overcome and start praying about it. And let the Lord fight my battle for me. And I'll be able to smile the rest of the day. Amen. Amen. If you're here today and you're out of the ark of safety, this is your time. This is the time to make a decision for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's able to do great and mighty works in everyone's life. He's able to tear down strongholds. He's able to give salvation. He's able to heal sick bodies. He's able to do great and mighty works. Hallelujah. But we need to trust him. And we need to believe him. And most of all, we need his salvation in our lives. We cannot have power with God if we're not born again. He said, after that, the Holy Ghost has come. You shall have power. Are you here? Are you here? We hope that you and your family enjoyed our broadcast today. I want to give you a personal invitation to come and to worship here in Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church. If you need transportation, you can call 513-861-2812. If you need prayer, you can call 513-559-9442. We hope and pray that you will come and be with us in our service. You and your family are welcome to come and worship with us here in Zion Temple. May God bless you. May he strengthen you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.